This isn't the first yes. dog I've interviewed, actually. Oh. I interviewed Pudsey about three years oh, ago. Oh, really? So this, I'm quite experienced the in this area. The lady before you was mm. just saying, yeah. yeah. How was Pudsey? Uh, he didn't say much. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Well, you should, in the last interview, he was really oh, piping really? up, yeah. <laughs> he had some opinions, <laughs> and they were not popular. <laughs> I really enjoyed the movie. You did? I did. Well, I, my, it's not um, really made for you. No, I know. Well, you know, my wife's dog, I take her to Richmond Park, and she just chases deer as well, so I could resonate, obviously, oh, God, and Honestly, well, you had to have that scene in, didn't you, oh, after no. Fenton? That's the thing. Every time I go there, I always want to shout, her name's Daisy, Daisy, but I'm so worried of someone filming me and being the next Fenton that I just go, Daisy. I'm going to begin by asking about building up a relationship with Harley, because, I mean, it's one of those yeah. things when you meet dogs. Sometimes they just either like you or they don't. And I was wondering mm -hmm. about your first meeting and how, if it took a while to kind of build that trust and it's that bond. It's also the thing, like, if a dog doesn't like you, you feel like maybe they've seen something evil inside you and that, <laughs> and that maybe like you're an evil person. And I, I assumed that Harley was gonna fall in love with me and that at the end of the film, that we just have to sort of go home together and live happily ever after. <laughs> but There's still a distance between them. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's very professional. Let's put it that way. Mm. He's keeping his distance. Because <laughs> yeah, I think dogs can see into our souls. Yes, mm. they 100% they can. Yeah. So, uh, it it makes me feel bad about my soul. <laughs> <laughs> Can I just say? But also they had to put um, pate on my face so that he would lick me. That's the level of, like every time I'd go in for like, oh, hello, he'd be like, I'm sorry, who's, I'm sorry, who's this woman? <laughs> sorry, can we get me back to my trailer now? I'm just not very, I'm just not really feeling it. Um, I'm gonna just begin by asking about directing a dog. And the, cause people always say, obviously the hard, it's hard to direct, don't work with children or animals. And in this case, you're working with an animal as, you're, as the co-lead in this movie. What, what, what sort of challenges did that pose to you? Do you know, it's fine. I don't know, it's one of those things that all of those people who've said don't work with animals haven't worked with Harley. I mean, it's fine. Sometimes he only does it once, but we're ready. One thing we learned was shoot the rehearsal. Don't have him rehearse and rehearse and then turn over. We learnt that day one. Mm -hmm. And so, of course, he's fine, honestly. He will, he'll do what is asked. It's all in the preparation. As long as I told Julie plenty in advance what we needed to do, she could train him to do it. Was it ever difficult at times to work with, with your co-lead being a dog? Because, I mean, you could deliver like the perfect scene and kind of just do this incredible monologue and then yeah. he could just fart or something. And yeah, then... there's, there's always that. Yeah. And, uh... Yeah, he, it's, he gets a lot of you know, praise for what he does because he gets a little bit of sausage every time he does something right. Whereas I couldn't convince Mandy to give me little bits of sausage when I'd done something right. So it just made me feel a bit bad, I guess. <clears throat> but did you, did you miss him after you shoot? Because it's not like humans. You, can't, you make a movie <laughs> of a human, you can just send them a text yeah. and give them a call and say, do you want to go for really, a drink on yeah, Tuesday? Yeah, I can't really can't... WhatsApp Harley. No. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I do miss him. I mean, look at him. <laughs> <laughs> well, he knows we're talking about him. Yeah, now. but have you kept in touch at all? Have you, have you since the shoot? Have you, have you, have you guys seen each other? Oh much? yeah, we've seen each other yeah. a few times. Yeah, uh, we saw each other to shoot the poster, and we saw each other on Graham Norton, which was fun. Um, so yeah, we see each other occasionally. I mean, he pretends he doesn't know me. Yeah. He's like, "Hi, nice to meet you," and I'm like, "We've met. We did a film together." Yeah, but. Obviously, so much of the attention on this movie is on Harley, and as the, obviously the, the film is called Patrick, and having a dog in the central character is always going to sort of sell sell tickets and stuff. But I mean, there's a real charm to beat, isn't it? She's the, she is the star of this movie, and it, you must have been thrilled to be collaborating with her on this project. I was absolutely thrilled. I begged Disney to have her because, of course, it's a big punt for them that she'd not taken the lead in a, a film before, and they obviously would have preferred to have had someone who that they knew you know, but I knew she could do it. I've worked with her on two or three occasions before. She is just, she's got her mum and her dad's genes. You know, she's a real charming girl next door. She's fantastic. And I, I'm glad you think so. I think she's terrific in the film. And obviously you got to work with Jennifer again in this as well. That must of have been course. great to get her uh, to get her involved. As, even It's something of a cameo role, but still great to have her involved. Well, she didn't want a big role, obviously, because, you know, it's her daughter's film. But um, she didn't know, you know, when she came out of makeup in a, a grey wig and a fat suit, you know, I said, well, you're going to blend into the background then. But she's brilliant. For the little bits she does, isn't she good value? Mm. I mean, was that, did, did you know she was going to come out in a wig and a fat suit? Or was that, because no, I can we, imagine her just sort of going off and just turning up on set and going, this is what I've decided. No, no, we, of course we discussed it. <laughs> we discussed it as to who we were going to base it on. But she, yes, she, she based it on a, you know, um, a cook that yeah. <laughs> she knows. Are you much of a dog person then? I'm I mean, prior to getting involved. I'm a huge dog yeah. person. 
I grew up with Border Terriers. Uh, my mum's got a Whippet. My sister's got two dogs. Oh, actually, Ron died. <laughs> but, but yeah, huge dog family. So what do you think it is that makes them so special? Because I mean, not that, not to say, not that to make them sort of sound like they're fashionable, but they're very in at the moment. Everyone's got a dog. And I think we're all start, starting to realise that they are probably the greatest things that we've ever had in our lives. So yeah. what, what, what is it about their companionship that makes them such a kind of a special companion? I think with dogs, it's like the unconditional love. Like they become little members of your family who you never argue with. <laughs> and... Uh, they're just little bundles of joy and they're always happy to see you when you come home. And they don't judge you. No, they don't no. judge you. If you're sitting, you know, in your pants, eating yogurt in front of Love Island, they won't judge you. Are you watching Love Island? Yeah. It's good, isn't it? Yeah. Because um, <laughs> well, you, you've directed some of the best television this country's ever produced, me from Blackadder to Only Fools. And Patrick has its fair share of laughs as well. Just wondering what it's like when you're shooting something very funny and you must have those moments, and you must have experienced those moments in your career when everyone in the crew and the cast just start laughing. Those kind of big scenes that you might have shot in Blackadder or Only Fools when just kind of those memorable moments where no one can keep their, their stuff together. Well, that's why I do it. As oh. not a day goes by where I don't end up crying with laughter over something. It might not be on screen, of course, but we have a very nice atmosphere on set, which enables people to try and do new things, try mad things, and when they do it, it's just fantastic. Is that often the case with, with comedy? Do you think that when you're uh, directing something that is quite lighthearted, do you think there is a, a that kind of um, expands and sort of seeps into the whole kind of atmosphere on set? Because oh, of, definitely, you know. definitely. I always work with a great energy because I always feel if it's not funny after take three, it's not going to be funny. So let's try something else. Or, you know, we've got it. So we work very quickly. And in that quickness, it, it brings an energy and it brings, everyone has to be, bring their best performance and have it there. And it's just great because they all feel like they're part of it and they're, they're motoring it along. It's, it's really good, really good atmosphere. So uh, there's one scene where you have to you sort of step in dog food. Now I've actually yeah. done that and mm. I had to wash my so toes underneath on the, in the bath. It is one of the most disgusting things in the world. Did, was that real? That, did yeah, you, that was, that was actual, real, that's yeah. real dog food. The jelly just gets ugh, in between your toes. Ugh. It's not nice. Yeah. <laughs> and I mean, because this is your sort of first real sort of leading role, obviously, in cinema. I mean, yeah. how was that experience for you? Because you're in basically every single scene. That must be quite yeah. a tough responsibility to turn up and know you're, you're always going to be required to be on it set. It was. I think you just, you just have to... Oh, oh sorry. And, and he, was, he was in every single scene as so well. He's heard he that you're the lead. Single... I mean, yeah. Is, yeah. <laughs> um, or maybe I... he just heard the word lead and thought he was going for <laughs> <Yeah>. a walk. <laughs> oh, is my earring falling? Yeah, my earring's falling out again. Hang on two seconds. Could someone give me a hand? <laughs> can, can you recall, is there one scene that really stands out in your mind that you remember directing across the course of your career, be it on TV or in film, that you just remember just being one of the most memorable and most funny? Um, I have to say it was when Rick Mayle was playing Flash Heart. And um, all week, he did, sort of, we'd had rehearsal and he'd done what I said and he moved where I asked him to and he said it how I felt thought would be the funniest way of saying it. And then when he came through that door in front of a live audience, he was just completely out of control. I have never laughed so much in my life. He just did his own thing and it was brilliant. I'm laughing thinking about it. Now. You just have to take it one day at a time and not think about it too much, otherwise you'll just crumble. <laughs> so I just sort of took it one day at a time, was just like, worked hard, learned my lines. <laughs> Does it require a different sort of sensibility when directing for, for film as opposed to TV or is it, is it, do you approach it in very much the same way? What I'm always aware is keeping the energy up. It's very easy to get sort of very relaxed. You get the after lunch thing, you know, everyone's just taking a break. They're all very relaxed. And what I try to do is keep that energy up that you would have with a TV audience is just make sure I've always got my eye on the fact that they've got to be that bubble of energy's got to be there. What, what's the kind of uh, the future hold for you in a sense? I mean, obviously this is a really big role, obviously a big Disney kind of production. Are you yeah. hoping this might kind of pave the way for more kind of leading roles in cinema? Are you hoping to do stuff on TV? And Yeah, you know? I hope so. Um, I mean, film and TV is sort of what I've always loved growing up, especially like comedy. So that's really what I want to do with the rest of my life. <laughs> or apply for next year's Love Island. Yes. Mm. 
That's, that's an always an option. Yeah. And in regards, I mean, it seems like uh, at the moment you can't sort of spend two minutes on, on Facebook or Twitter without finding some sort of cute picture or video of a dog at the moment. Everyone seems to be kind of dog mad. What, what do you think it is about dogs? Are you a dog person? And that, that makes them such a special companion. No, I, my dogs are in the film. I managed to get them in, of course, the nice. complete stage is mother. Their, is that their first ever First ever, credit, first ever, probably won't do it no. again. They weren't impressed. Um, no, I, honestly, I think people, it gets you fit. People get out, they get walking, they, you meet people, you talk to people. I think they're a great companion. I love them. And just finally, very quickly, what's next for you? Have you got anything lined up? I have. I'm working on um, two projects, one, uh, both of which are coming up to finance, and I'm writing another film. Oh, good. Looking forward to it. Patrick, too? Funnily enough, it's got a dog in it. Oh, lovely. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for your time today. Thank you very Thank you. much. Cheers. Okay, bye-bye. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys! Hey You Guys, huh? Hey You Guys, Is yeah. that from the Goonies? It is indeed, yeah. Nice. Hey!